today's gonna be a different video. There's a YouTube channel I've been meaning to go over for a while, but just never found the motivation. But I feel like I should, because these guys are a bit, shall we say, controversial. Today, we're talking about PragerU. Yeah, those guys. If you've watched anything by H Bomber Guy or Sean before, chances are you know who these guys are. They're notorious for their extremely controversial opinions about stuff like the LGBTQ community, climate change, healthcare, you know, stuff people get mad about. But I feel like I need to talk about these guys, not just because of their reputation, but also all the stuff buried underneath the surface. Misinformation, discrimination, even borderline propaganda, none of that is new to PragerU. And that's not even discussing the, shall we say, conflict of interest they face. PragerU is an enigma, a relic of a time and place never meant to slip into our world. You might want to sit down for this one. Oh god, where do I even start? The name PragerU is probably the best place to begin. The term Prager in the name PragerU isn't a term, it's a name itself. Specifically, it's the last name of PragerU founder, Dennis Prager, an absolute dinosaur of a man who Google calls a talk show host. He's a staunch conservative and thought he needed to make a whole YouTube channel just to tell people why the left is bad. Not very well, mind you, but we'll get to that. Now, you might be wondering what the U in PragerU is, and <laughs> get ready for this. The U stands for university. Because PragerU is full of bullshit. The channel actually calls itself a university, as if you could just make some mildly informative videos and call yourself a school. Of course, they can't actually use that term officially, so they call themselves an educational media platform in the about page. Their videos mostly consist of complaining about leftists and progressive ideas. Such as this video, leftism has become a religion. Yeah, that's the kind of stuff they do. They have many different hosts on to spread their ideas, such as world-renowned conservative debater Ben Shapiro, and also some African-Americans to let you know they're definitely not racist. Definitely not. Really, the only arguments they have to back up their points are very clearly biased news sources and claiming that the vague idea of leftism is bad because I say so, just trust me on that. Most of PragerU's money comes from donations from different organizations, including two oil fracking billionaires called Dan and Ferris Wilkes, who, interestingly, have family members within the PragerU organization. It's almost as if they've been provided financial support in exchange for a means of spreading their political views. What? A company paying someone to spread misinformation? Nonsense. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to enjoy this delicious Kit Kat that was not made via slave labor. Thank you to Nestle for sponsoring this video. I was scrolling through PragerU's endless stream of videos, trying to see if I could find one that caught my eye, and I think I have. I found a video titled The Truth About Canadian Healthcare, and it immediately intrigued me because, well, I live in Canada. Honestly, I was just really curious to see just how PragerU would pick apart Canadian healthcare, because I was under the impression that Canadian healthcare was superior, at least financially. The video was hosted by Alan, Alan with an I, Lambert, a French-Canadian entrepreneur who I've never heard of. Maybe Wikipedia can tell me something about this guy. Oh, I see. Although, don't you think it's weird that they put on an entrepreneur to talk about healthcare? Like, you'd think they put on, you know, a doctor. Like, come on, Dennis, you can do better than that. I mean, he is an entrepreneur, and PragerU relies on donations, so... <laughs> I was honestly kind of glad they put a Canadian person in the video to share. If they had just put an American on who had never stepped foot across the border, I would have been much more skeptical than I already was going in. So, I was going into this video with a somewhat open mind. That being said, what did Alan say to discredit the Canadian healthcare system? NOTHING! All he did was share a couple of anecdotes and then sloppily compare them to the US without providing any actual details. Not one scientific paper was cited, not one financial report, no studies, no articles, nothing! Just a couple of sob stories and some loosely mentioned unsighted facts. Honestly, something seems up with Alan in this video. Especially at the end, his voice seems empty and stilted. Thank you for watching this video. To keep PragerU videos free, please consider making a tax-deductible donation. It's almost as if he's reading off of an unrehearsed script. Now, I wasn't really being fair earlier when I said that there weren't any sources cited. There is a link in the description that goes to the PragerU website, and there are a bunch of sources cited. 
None of them were in the video, but hey, at least they were there. One of the sources cited is a study showing that 50,000 Canadians traveled abroad for healthcare in 2014. Except it's not a study, it's an article about a study. And the study isn't even cited. <laughs> Honestly, I have a feeling that PragerU didn't even read this article in its entirety. Or if they did, they didn't expect anyone to find it. This is because the article directly contradicts what they say in the video. The article blatantly states that, overall, the American healthcare system ranked worse than Canada's in a survey of 11 industrialized nations. So not only did PragerU use an article that didn't even cite its sources, but the article goes against their claims of American superiority in the video. PragerU made this video with the expectation that no one would look at the sources. <laughs> you fool! I have an unhealthy sleep schedule and I'm on the internet eight hours a day! The article claims that one reason so many Canadians leave is the long wait times, which was also discussed in length in the video. And this actually makes sense. A study in 2010 showed that, on average, Canadian hospitals have longer wait times in the US. Maybe it has to do with the fact that Canadians don't need to pay obscene amounts of money to get treatment, and therefore are more likely to turn to the public healthcare system. Hmm. This part concerned me the most, though. The article mentioned, quote, Outside of a few specific areas targeted for aggressive wait time reduction, you can be pretty much screwed if you need a test or procedure for anything less than a life-threatening condition. The system's limited resources will always, naturally, go to those most in need. Wow! It's almost like if the resources don't go to the people that are dying, they'll die! Look, I get it. If you've got cataracts or need a hip replacement or something like that, yeah, I can imagine it'd be annoying to have to wait a while. The cataracts aren't going to kill you, but you know what will? Total renal failure due to a malignant tumor! So, the fact that people are complaining about having to wait for cataract surgery while people lie in hospital beds fighting for their lives is honestly kind of selfish. I am not in any way discounting the importance of treatment for non-life-threatening issues. It's just... some things are more important. But... hold on a second. This article was written by the National Post, a deeply conservative news source famous among people who already agree with them. Clearly, PragerU has some bias problem with all of this. So, let's look at another one of those sources to get some truly unbiased facts about all of the- Oh, Alan with an eye. The Fraser Institute is a Canadian think tank organization with a, let's say, troubled past. It, like the National Post, is a deeply conservative source that mostly produces research articles about finance and other related topics, and also why standardized testing is good. They also talk about healthcare a lot, which I find interesting because they made multiple papers against tobacco regulation. I wonder what could have prompted that. PragerU actually cited multiple sources from the Fraser Institute, but most of them are about stuff they've already talked about. The one that isn't is all about health insurance in Canada, and it claims that about 9% of the average Canadian's income is spent on health insurance. That does sound like quite a bit, but... In 2019, the average American spent about 15% of their income on health insurance. More than Canada! Higher than 60% more, in fact! But wait, what about taxes? Don't Canadians pay higher taxes? Well, yeah, they do. On average, Canadians pay 15-32% to of their income on taxes, whereas Americans pay 10-37%. to Overall, Canadians pay higher taxes. But that's vastly made up for by the fact that Canadians don't have to pay the equivalent of a mortgage whenever they get bitten by a snake. No, seriously. In 2015, a man named Todd Fazler got bitten by a rattlesnake and received life-threatening injuries. He was rushed to the hospital where he got treatment and lived, but received this hospital bill. For comparison, a condo in Edmonton, Alberta costs around 250,000 Canadian dollars, or 200,000 USD, or a liter of gas. And Todd is in no way the only victim of this. An article by The Balance looked at several studies that concluded that anywhere from 26 to 62 percent of bankruptcies in America are due to medical expenses. This is completely unacceptable. Imagine having to live in a country where an injury at no fault of your own can completely destroy your financial position, putting you in severe debt or worse. Except, you probably don't have to imagine it, because according to my YouTube statistics, more than 30% of you are from the States. In this video, Alan is promoting a healthcare system that punishes people for getting sick or injured. No wonder there's such a financial divide in that country, because any middle-class citizen who so much as breaks their pinky toe gets a hospital bill worth more than their entire house- Will returned Canadian teenager gets irrationally angry at a 73-year-old man's YouTube channel in a moment. <sighs> Alright, so, to recap. PragerU made a video discussing Canadian healthcare, arguing that it is, in fact, worse than American healthcare. 
Their two main sources are an article from the National Post that doesn't even cite its sources and goes against what they say in the video, and a report from the Fraser Institute that directly disproves its own points. Wow. This... This is what PragerU does. It makes videos with anecdotal evidence that cites sources that disprove its own points, and then clings onto a single idea for the duration of the video. Literally, the only thing Alan had going for him in this video is the wait times, and he clung to that the entire video using his sob stories, sorry, anecdotal evidence, to explain the same point over and over again. Not once do they come to any scientific conclusions about anything. I also don't think it's a coincidence they chose a business expert to talk about healthcare. They can't put a medical professional on because a medical professional would have told the truth. A medical professional would have told their audience rational explanations as to how and why wait times are so long, because let's not forget that was their one real point. The reason I spent so long on the sources of this video is that the video itself is just so bare bones. There's nothing here to talk about except for the stories, which say basically nothing. The only reason I even kept going with the script is that they bothered to cite their sources at all. Which begs the question, why is it so empty? And this is where I bring you to the comments section. While most of this video's comments are full of people who already agree with them, there are a few scattered comments of the sharing of experiences. And almost all of them have something in common. Usually, the commenters will share one of their experiences, usually some sort of Canadian healthcare horror story, and usually very similar to one of the anecdotes shared in the video. This is what PragerU is doing in this video. They're appealing to the minuscule minority of viewers that can relate to the video, telling them, Don't worry, you're just like me. You hate this thing, and that's good. I hate it too. I'm here to protect you. They use anecdotes to relate to these people and let them know that they're right, and they were always right. And PragerU is here to keep telling them that they are right. It's okay. You were right all along. And anyone who says otherwise, well, they're the bad guys. They're the evil leftist progressive socialists. We'll protect you from the bad guys, and you can help with your generous donations. And with that, PragerU hooks in yet another source of income and support. By appealing to those left vulnerable due to a bad experience with Canadian healthcare, they bring in those who, in most likelihood, were simply unlucky. But they don't believe that. They don't have to believe it. PragerU tells them what to believe. PragerU will protect them. And that's all they need to know. PragerU has done literally everything wrong with this video. They hired an entrepreneur to talk about healthcare, they provided strictly anecdotal evidence, they clung to a single point the entire video, and they cited sources that directly contradict their own points. Surely, it cannot get any worse than this. Oh, what the fuck? Hi, this is the outro now. This is completely unscripted, so you're going to hear a lot of mumbling and stuttering. Um, this is probably the most effort I've ever put into a video, and honestly, I'm really excited to do more videos like it. Complaining about conservatives on the internet and roasting them with cited sources. Also, um, to make that joke about Nestle, um, I literally just walked down to the Circle K and bought a Kit Kat. Um, but I also got roped into buying an Arrow, it, and it didn't occur to me until I was walking home from the store that I had just been coaxed into buying two Nestle products for a joke about Nestle. Also, I just find it really funny that on, on the packaging here it says Summer Breakation! Win $10,000 or something like that. It's April! It's snowing outside! <laughs> okay, speaking of which, I should probably clarify about that Nestle joke earlier. This video is not sponsored by Nestle. That was a joke. It was a satirical parody. Please do not destroy us, oh great Swiss overlords. And with that, uh, yeah, I hope you liked the video. If you didn't, well, make a response video I can pick apart. <laughs> anyway, uh, bye. I'm off to eat the rest of this Kit Kat. See ya. You, you can click off the video now, it's done.